Hi everyone, this is Donald again. Just making a quick video about the caucus process. Now, um, I, I left from ISU on the bus they had set up to go to the Shoshone Bannock Hotel and Event Center about 6 o'clock. I finally got out there about 6.30. Um, there was quite a line outside waiting to get in. And so, and there was also two lines. One for people like me who had pre-registered through the internet and those who hadn't registered at all and were just showing up there. So we worked our way through the line, which is a long and sort of winding line going into the building and even inside the building. And I eventually got into the hall itself uh, about 6.45. And because there were so many people still waiting in line at 7 o'clock, they didn't actually close the doors, I think, until it was like 7.30. And inside the room, it was just incredible to see. One whole half of the room was just Bernie, Bernie Sanders supporters. And on the other side, it, half of the remaining half was Hillary Clinton supporters. Then there was Undecided, and then some guy, I can't remember his name now, who was running, whose name was on the ballot as well. So we went through the first ballot and it, it's quite interesting is because it was like 78.1 to I can't remember what what the actual percentage was that um, Clinton had. So we went and heard the second round of speeches and heard the first round of, well, well the first round of speeches and then the second round of speeches. But um, the first round of speeches were kind of interesting. I don't really remember what much of what the Bernie Sanders person said, but there was something that I can't even remember who what the guy's name was, but the guy who was speaking on behalf of the Hillary Clinton side of things, and there was something that kind of bugged me about his speech because it, it all seemed to center around, well, Hillary is inevitable, so you might as well for what for now, you know. Might as well have Bernie just back out, stop, you know. But that didn't really sway anyone. And like I said, 78% of the people went for Sanders. Now, then they had a couple of ISU students doing the speaking, one for Bernie and one for Hillary. And the one who spoke for Hillary kind of bugged me. I mean, both speeches kind of bugged me, because, but the second one especially... Because her whole point seems to be, well, Hillary has a vagina. Vote for her. He, she's a woman. You know, and she, he, she probably made some good points, really. She did. About the wage gap, which I don't know how, if it's really accurate these days. I've heard a lot of things about it being myth more than anything else anymore. And basically, the rest of it was boiled down to Hillary has a vagina. Therefore, vote for Hillary. And it's funny, there's this guy that I would had been watching for the whole time that was there. Um, a green um, a cap, holding up a big sign. He, she, and he was going around throughout the crowd. And when the second speaker for Bernie came up, it's like, has anybody been chosen to do this, to speak in the second round of the of this? And this guy, you know, a bunch of people started pointing at him. I said, Chris, put Chris up there. Have him speak. Yay. Well, he gets up there. And I, like I said, I don't, I don't really remember what he said. But he was talking about how the Bernie campaign had reinvigorated his passion for voting and for politics and how he wanted to be like Bernie Sanders um, and how he would want to, at some point in the future, Think about getting into politics and running for public office himself, and that he was inspired by Bernie Sanders to do that. That he wanted to follow Bernie's example and be like Bernie, and bring about change in the system. And you know, it was a it was an inspiring speech. I mean, more power to the guy if he can. You know, I'm gonna keep an eye out because he probably had a beard and all that stuff, but. I think he's someone that, to, you know, in terms of Idaho politics, in terms of uh, the Democratic side, is possibly someone that should be, I should keep my eye out on, eye out for. But 
anyways, and, oh, there was another thing. There's this cute part. You know, um, there's all these Bernie chants all, every once in a while throughout the entire night. But it was funny. I was sitting on the, the floor in this convention hall room. And there's a, a little family, you know, the couple and the two children sitting nearby to where I was sitting. And, there, and after one of those waves of Bernie chants, dies down and this little girl is sitting there pizza 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 i thought it was just cute i mean i wish i had my camera out and had videotaped that but that is the cutest and funniest thing that really happened during the entire night um the whole event was fun um i had like well, I, I had fun um i was kind of nervous because i don't like crowds and literally i was in the middle of this huge crowd the entire time I was there. There was a big turnout, I think a lot bigger than what the Democrats had thought there would be for this event. And I haven't heard the results for Idaho yet, but at least in Idaho, in Bannock County, it was 79% for Bernie Sanders. And then about like whatever it is for Hillary. So I think I did a good thing. I had fun. And I guess I'll let you go for now. But thank you for watching this video. So, uh, consider liking this video. Subscribing to my channel. If you see any potential in my presentation. In my commentary skills. In this channel in general. Subscribe to this channel. Like I said, thumbs up this video. Comment. Sub subscribe. Share it. And Thank you so much. Until next time, be awesome, everyone.